Hello everyone, my name is General Fancy Pants, and welcome back to Secret Files Tunguska. When we last left off, we made uh, the diadem with all the gems in it and revealed to us that uh, on the, the map, map plan in the main, basically, exhibit that there is a room being renovated and there was an 8 on it, so it was room 8. And apparently there's something interesting in it, but a lot of those things ended up in Max's office. And he said we can kind of look around and see what we can find. So let's start doing that. And let's kind of start uh, right at the bottom here and see what we can find. Okay, there's a mask right here. If I remember correctly from the documentation on the Incas that I have seen recently, these kinds of masks were worn during ritual sacrifices. Okay. Um, a shield? A pygmy warrior's shield from the year 1687 or 1688 in the region of Asia, or something like that. Alright, anything else down here? Nope. Let's start up here then. Let's kind of move out of the way here. Okay, we have a vase. It looks ancient. Although I saw one like these in some Swedish furniture store only last week, I think this one, however, is ancient. <laughs> Fair enough. A relief disc. Oh, there's a coin right there. thought something looked a little bit different there, but I was wondering why they would put a close-up of this and it made no sense, but I see it now. A rider? I always thought the Aztecs didn't have horses. Stranger and stranger. Well, let's take that coin. That thing has obviously just been set in there. It doesn't belong to the relief disc. Now the relief disc looks a little bit odd without... I suppose maybe discolored it or something because it's just part of these circles here, but... Alright, we have a coin now. I got that thing out of the Aztec relief disc in Max's office. I have no idea whether it is a metal or a coin or what, but the horseman looks like a skeleton. That's kind of freaky, and it kind of looks like one of the coins in Dad's office. Here's another vase. That could be an antique. Unfortunately, that's about all I can say about it. And another vase? A vase from the Ming Dynasty. I broke one like this when I was a kid. <laughs> That's not good. I guess these things aren't really rare if she's taking it as lightly as she is. Oh, uh, we don't really need to talk to Max or anything. So let's go back to Dad's office and see if that coin is part of that coin set that he had. Oh, yes, and we also need to read our diary because we got some more um, information on it. So, uh, catastrophe. On the morning of June 30th, 1908, there were indeterminable, indeterminable phenomena to be seen in the sky. A short time later, a cataclysmic explosion with a magnitude greater than 2,000 Hiroshima bombs shook the stillness of the endless stretches of the mid-Siberian mountains. An inferno of flames reduced everything to rubble and ash. An unimaginable shockwave snapped trees in half like matches and threw herders and their reindeer 20 kilometers from the explosion into the air. Seismic vibrations raced around the world at 500 meters a second. That night, the sky was aglow in Europe. That's really crazy. Yeah, and there's some pictures. This is what I was talking about. Uh, if you look at pictures of the explosion site, these trees are just knocked off. Like, they're completely just knocked over. And... It's just, it's like the whole circle of, of trees, and it's really, really kind of interesting to look at. Just the, how much power was behind that explosion. But uh, let's check out the next entry. Strange discovery. While drilling, Russian meteor mineralogist uh, Leonid Kulik allegedly discovered a substance that was unlike any material known on Earth. Kulik had already made the headlines 11 years before. He had claimed to have found a giant, unshaped the object made of an unknown material between unnaturally grown tr plants near the explosion site in the Tunguska region. 
All attempts to take rock samples failed because the material was too hard, and during the next expedition, the mysterious object had suddenly disappeared. Interesting. I don't know if that's also true or not, or if that's just part of the story. But that is quite interesting. Alright, so now that we got those out of the way, let's see if we can maybe figure out this coin puzzle now that we have potentially the missing piece. And sure enough, it is exactly like these other three, so let's put this coin in here. The coin seems to complete the set. Uh, that's a diary entry. I think. I thought it was. Maybe not. I guess not. Okay, never mind. So now, let's read the note again. The note says, And the prince said to the princess, whether vertical, horizontal, or in both main diagonals, make sure that there is never a repeat within a line. Hmm. Does that have something to do with the coins? I believe it does. Now this is uh, just one of the first puzzles of the game, at least a actual puzzle as it were. So basically, none of these coins can be in the same row of each other. So if I put this coin here, that wouldn't work because there's a there's a, there's a coin right next to each other. Or if I put it here, that wouldn't work either because it's in the same row. So we have to figure out how to do this. Basically, I think we can basically start with one row at a time. So let's maybe move like this one here, this one here, nope. Oh, in the main diagonal, so here and here. So this one here then, that will work. That's right, it's just the main diagonals. So it's this way and this way. And this one here. Now, let's kind of do the same with these. So this one can go right here. This one can go right here. That can stay there. This one can go right there. Oh, all of these are in a row. <laughs> Never mind. That's not right. I don't think. Well, obviously it's not or else something would have happened. How do we get these? That's weird. Um... That will work. And then... Huh. This is going to be challenging, I think. Let me just think about it for a little bit. Which ones are causing the problems? This one... No, that won't work. So technically, these are okay now. Okay. Something like that? Nope. What am I missing? Which one is in the same row? Or can they not even be in the diagonals? Hmm. Let's see here. Um put I think these are well if there's obviously very there's a, probably a few ways you can do this I'm assuming no that doesn't I feel like this is could be right let's ha what's what happens if we leave the go back nope 
All right, so we obviously are, aren't doing something correctly here. Oh. <laughs> Oops, that opened up a trap door. It appears to be some kind of secret compartment. What could my father need one for? It contains documents. <laughs> okay, apparently I... It has to do with my father's research expeditions. It's written here that in 1958, he was the leader of a secret expedition into the Tunguska region. Apparently after the 1958 expedition, someone in the highest position tried to keep the results secret. It has to do with some strange plant growth. Daddy wanted to continue his research, but all further investigations were prohibited. And then apparently he did travel to the region again himself, only in the company of a certain Manuel Perez and a local guide. That was in 1977. If I understand this correctly, a lot went wrong on this expedition. Something awful happened to Perez, and both of them were arrested. My father has not been able to find out what exactly happened to him that night, and Perez disappeared without a trace from that time forward. Daddy writes later that here at the latest, he should have realized that human life is always more important than research. What does he mean? Maybe I should ask Max. He'd be able to help me with all the formulae and explain the scientific expressions. And this is a letter from some society in Ireland. But these are just empty pages? I definitely need help. Maybe Max knows something about it all. Sorry, I still don't have anything. But I... How that is connected with my father's disappearance, I don't yet know. But I have found some of his records in a secret compartment. They describe a secret expedition and some very strange events and... Hey, slow down. I can't follow you that quickly. The best thing to do would be to come with me to my father's office. I'll show you the records and then we should perhaps have a look at his filing cabinet. Okay, let's go. I told you that I didn't want to see you here again. Believe me, it really would have been better if you had kept out of it. Now I have no other choice but to... <coughs> Kambersky? Looks like I came just in time. Are you okay? Yes, I think so. What did the detective want from us anyway? Did he want to shoot us? Well, he probably doesn't have his weapon trained on you just for the fun of it. We should get away from here before this guy wakes up. Man, there's a lot going on in this little <laughs> scene. I'm sorry that I was so unfriendly when we first met. For some time now, I've had the feeling that I'm being pursued. And my nerves are shot right now. Of course I know your father. To be precise, I have known him for a very long time. And I know him very well. I was with him on one of his expeditions back then. We were in the Tunguska region back then. Together with the Cuban Manuel Perez. An Irish biologist whose name I can't recall at the moment. And some assistants. I don't want to get into details regarding the events of the past. But for some reason, someone appears to be very interested right now. I have the feeling that not only your father, but I as well am in danger. And possibly all members of that past expedition still living. Of course, I can't prove it. But if I'm not mistaken, the Russian Secret Service, FSB, could be behind it. They already tried back then to prevent us, and your father in particular, from undertaking further expeditions. You know about your mother? My mother? Why? What does she have to do with anything? You know that she died in an accident? Yes, but... It is rather questionable whether it really was an accident. You were in the car as well. I was driving behind you when the car suddenly crashed through a bridge railing and plunged into a river. I was barely able to get you out of there. But when I tried to save your mother, two of my fingers were torn off. Therefore... Daddy never told me anything about that. I'm certain he tried not to burden you with that as well. The two of us have already reproached ourselves enough. But enough about the past. Now we have to find your father again. Due to the events of the last few days, I activated a few of my contacts. One of them is Sergei, who is moving in circles which... Well, I'd rather not be found anywhere near them. 
but he knows just about everything that no one is actually supposed to know. According to his information, a research station was built in the Tunguska region decades ago, and now another transport is planned to go there. Supposedly, not all the scientists who are to be transported there are participating voluntarily. This research trip and the disappearance of your dad a few days before its start could very well be linked. Does that mean my father was kidnapped and is now sitting on a train to Siberia? What do they want from him? Even if, officially, he hasn't been active in research for years, he is still an expert in his field. I am sure that Sergei could help us. I have to go to Moscow? I have an airplane. We could be there in a few hours. I know this is all quite a lot to swallow at once. But if your dad is really on that train, we have no time to lose. As soon as he reaches the Tunguska region, we'll barely be able to get him out again. The area around the station is too heavily guarded. What do you mean? I don't know. But maybe it is the only chance. So let's go. It would be good if someone stayed behind. In case Vladimir does get in touch after all. But... Nina, we should go if we want another chance to get there before the train leaves. I suppose I could have another look at your father's records, but I don't have a good feeling. Great. Then let's go. Take good care of yourself, okay? I'll do my very best. I wish I could. Yes, me too. Good luck. didn't tell me you were such a beauty. If I had known that, my price would have gone down. Yes, I'm happy to see you too. You can help me in the search for my father. Sergei can do a lot of things. Some say Sergei can do everything. But Sergei is martyr, so let's just stick with Sergei can do almost everything. Yes, yes. Modesty honors you. What can I do for you? I thought you knew that. Sure. But Sergei needs all the information again firsthand. And looking at your mouth and your moving lips. Are you going to help me or just gawk? How does the saying go? One hand washes the other. Okay. So my father has disappeared. I only wanted to meet him in the museum where he worked. And as I arrived. Yeah, yeah. Sergei knows that. Then what do you want to know? What did your father do in the last few weeks? What was he working on? Who was he working for? Oh, quite honestly, I have no idea. I have never really spoken to my father to any extent about his work. He tends to hold hour-long lectures about scientific things, and after a few minutes, I tend to fall half asleep. Then at some time, we agreed to leave the subject of work out of our conversations. Not good. Really not good. Yes, I know, but... It doesn't matter now anyway. But again, I really don't know what it was or for who he has been working for recently. Besides his work for the museum, he still held lectures and prepared reports, but I can't be any more exact than that. All I know is that in the last few days, he seemed a bit unconcentrated, as if he was especially concerned with something. But what that was? That gets us nowhere. A couple of birdies told me in the last few days that another train is leaving for the Tunguska region today. It has to do with some kind of scientific experiments. What kind exactly, I don't know. But it's not important now. In any case, a few old friends have been reactivated. Old friends? Reactivated? Scientists and people who know the area who were in the Tunguska region in the past, they were, well, asked to cooperate. Some came voluntarily. Others had to be persuaded. Ah, oh, I understand. Good. Be that as it may, your father may be with them. Is he in danger? If he doesn't do anything stupid, he won't have any problems normally. But how are we going to get him out? 
We aren't going to get him out at all. But as I've already said, Sergei can do almost everything. An old acquaintance is standing at the side entrance of the train station. He'll take you in and give you a pass and a uniform. As soon as you're on board the train, you should be able to find enough time to look around. The guards on board are usually busy drinking and playing cards during the trip. Oh, and by the way, you're traveling under the name Nina Perkova. Your last name could give you away if your father is actually on board. So I get in the train, eliminate all the guards, and free my father. Alone? Great plan. Just great. When you find him, then we'll see how you'll get your father out. Not to worry. Sergei would never leave such a sweet ass hanging. Okay, that's a relief then. I'm sorry. I'm a little bit nervous about my father. I really am happy that you could help me. Thank you. That's okay, little one. They don't call Sergei the good soul of Moscow for nothing. And don't forget, even if you get information that you don't know what to do with, Sergei can certainly figure it out. Okay, I'll see what I can find out. Nice weather we're having, isn't it? Uh, yeah. It's much too nice to sit around out here. Comrade Yushin is taking your shift now, isn't that nice of him? What? Why? Come with me. Let's chat a bit. It doesn't seem to be my lucky day today. Was that a coincidence, or did they find out that Sergei bribed one of the guards? In any case, I now have a huge problem. Sergei has gone. My cell phone has no signal here, and I have to get onto the train fast. Nina, it's time for a stroke of genius. I need an idea. Okay, that was a long, long cutscene. Holy cow. <laughs> Um, yeah, so this could be a little bit extra long episode, but at the moment, let's see about this diary here. Actually, I think I'm going to save this for the next episode. So, I will call it an episode right here, and uh, next time we will read those diary entries, and also we will figure out how to get on the train. So it looks like there's a lot of stuff that's going on here, and... Uh, we're getting ourselves into some really, I don't know, we might be biting off more than we can chew, but we'll figure that out later. I'll see you guys next time on... <laughs> Sierra, sorry, got distracted. I'll see you guys next time on Secret Files Tunguska. Until then.